Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Chris Petri here. Guys, I just want to say a quick hello to everybody, especially for my new subscribers that are joining in uh, on my uh, YouTube site. I really appreciate it. Um, today, I am actually uh, doing something a little different. A lot of times you'll notice on my videos, I play music and um, maybe some nature sound effects, things like that. Um, I try to mix it up and uh, I had a few requests uh, recently that uh, they asked if I could um, do some uh, narration of what I'm uh, what I'm doing when I'm painting here. So I'm more than happy to um, talk while I paint here and I'm gonna try to go pretty quickly. Um, so I'm just pretty much using um, <clears throat> three, three uh, round brushes, uh, two uh, Da Vinci Maestro brushes, a number six and a number eight with really good points on them. These are a couple of years old and they still have really nice points on them. And then I have also an Escada a Reserve. This is also a um, sable brush, round. So I'm using three sizes. They're, I guess these would be considered like medium size for round brushes. And then here I have across from me, um, directly to my right, I have a little setup of just some uh, still life objects. I have a couple paint tubes and a um, Da Vinci Maestro brush here and also a uh, squirt bottle for water um, to mist my paints on my palette, keep them uh, moist. And I tried to leave my palette in here too so you guys can see the um, some of the paints that I mix, but pretty much what I'm doing when I paint here is just, uh, I just dip into the paint and usually put about half, I dip my paint into the moist, I dip my brush into the moist paint about halfway in after I add a little bit of water to the brush and then shake it off a few times just to get the excess water off the brush. And then the brush becomes moist with water. I shake a little bit off in my uh, water bucket. I have a water bucket here. Uh, you can get these at any art store, Blix, or um, your local hobby shop, stuff like that. So I just usually take the brush, wet it, do a couple of shakes in there. Sometimes I just do a little dab on the edge of the water bucket and then I dip right into the paint. Maybe I'll just bring the paint tray over here. So here I would do some uh, cerulean blue and just get about that much on the end of the brush. And then I would go right into the into the painting just like this. And I'm going to do this here. Do a little bit on the top of the paint tube. Since I still have lots of paint, I'm going to try to do a little more painting here. And what I'll do next is maybe change the color from cerulean blue to maybe some cobalt blue just to make a little variation, change of color. And I'm looking over at my, my still life, which I have over a little bit to the right in front of me. So I have all the same setup of paints and so forth right in front of me here and I'm looking over at it. I have a spotlight on it, shining on it to give me the shadows and I did a contour drawing first here. So I'm going along, just trying to, now I'm trying to add a little bit of shadow colors maybe in the, the tube. And I'm going to take some yellow ochre just to kind of break up the, it's nice to mix a lot of different colors I think into the um, painting, give it variation and changes. Okay, now I see a little bit of a darker blue on the side here, the shadow side. Go a little darker. Then I'm gonna go into some more cobalt blue for my shadow color. Do that. So I'm trying to tie in the shadow with the with the tube itself. Maybe I'll go in with a touch of alizarin crimson, crimson just to again vary the colors a little bit, make it a little more interesting instead of just doing everything with the one color. And then I let the paint mingle and 
do its, what it does, just mix around a little bit and like that. Okay, and maybe a little splash just to keep things loose and fun. Now I think I'm going to go up to the Maestro, Da Vinci Maestro brush here. So I'm going to try to use some, I try to use the the colors that I see in front of me on the still life that I have set up, I try to use the same colors. So I'll go right in with the some black. And then I push my brush down and go right across like that. It's a nice simple stroke. Then I'll maybe add a little bit of burnt sienna just to change it around a little bit. I'm going to let that dry a little bit, maybe add a little bit of some, that would be French ultramarine blue, give it a little change there in color. Then I'm going to, I see, I see like a reflection on the metal of the brush, the, the ferrule of the brush. So I'm going to put that in. I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Sometimes it's good to change brush sizes if you think you have something that's going to be a little bit challenging to do with a larger brush. You can switch over and bit of tissue just to pick up some paint. Now and I'm picking up some different colors on the palette here, some uh, yellow ochre a little bit mixed with the um, burnt sienna. Burnt umber to get the color of the brush hairs, and I'm noticing that it's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter at the this point here, and I'm always remembering that I can always go back in and add a little bit of darks here and there to sort of uh, delineate lines that might that I might be seeing in front of me. Sometimes watercolors naturally bleed and flow into each other. So you can always go back and add a little bit of dark once it dries a little bit. So I think with watercolor, it's nice to move around the painting here and there and let things dry over here, go over there. Then when it's dry, you can move back over here. Like I'm letting this dry over here, the tube of paint, and I'll come back in a little while and then maybe retouch up some things over here. Maybe add a little bit of writing on the uh, tube. Some shadows maybe. And maybe do that now. I'll just add a quick little, with a smaller brush, I'm going to add the shadow I see right where the, right where the tube is. Where that Okay, I might not be able to finish this whole painting here in 15 minutes. I'd like to though. Let me check the time. How are we doing on time? Nine minutes. Okay, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, okay, I'm going to go a little bit quicker now, so I'll just try to go faster, pick up the pace here. Again, just. Um, Adding some splashes there. Now I'm going to add the shadow under the brush. And I notice it's quite dark under here. 
starting out there. Cobalt blue that works really good for shadows. It's pretty transparent for a color. For the for a blue, it's certain colors you'll notice that are more transparent. Others are a little more opaque where light doesn't show through them underneath. So, all right, I should have waited on this a little bit. So I'm just going to dab with the brush. It's not too bad. A little bit of point, point there. I think you should be able to see the colors mixing on my palette there. Okay, so now you see I'm, I'm starting to fiddle too much over here. So that now's a good time to move on somewhere else. I'm gonna get busier here and quicker and try to get some um, some of this completed so I'm gonna do the water bottle I'm gonna go quicker here so I'm, now I'm doing the water inside the bottle which is I'm not gonna get too fancy with this or take too much time on it I'm gonna try to capture the shadow there And up here. A couple of splashes. A little bit of variation in the color. I'm going to add a little bit of um, raw sienna to this. And a little bit of alizarin crimson. I use alizarin crimson down here, so I definitely want to use it around the painting. In other places to sort of harmonize everything. And okay, I got a lot of blue here. Okay, a nice complement to blue is orange. So another check on time. Okay. So now I'm going to go into some orange. That makes a nice complement. Try to use some here and there. Okay, now I'm really gonna. Now, if I wasn't doing a video, I would take more time to do a little more, uh, a little more careful brush strokes and planning things a little bit more here. getting there and then I want to make sure I I have foam foam board actually that this is all set up all these paint tubes and brush and, and squirt bottle is on some foam, white foam board and I have it set up like in a on a the back and then the, the base so it's sitting on here and then I have the other fo white foam board just leaning up against something to give me my back splash so, so to speak and It's going to make some more colors, interesting things here, maybe to just and if that happens, don't worry about it. There we go. 